Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've made a tutorial video, but here's a video for you today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a motor on your TVS Vendetta or on your arms if you happen to break an arm or you want to try new motors in general. Of course, you could just buy, if you break an arm, you could just buy a whole uh, replacement like you see right here. But in the long run, it's just not going to be practical because it's expensive. A brand new arm like this with the two motors is going to cost about $50 to $60 because it going to buy the two motors. They've already done the soldering and it comes with the carbon fire arm. It just adds up in cost. It's more practical to actually just uh, replace the motor yourself and then you can get up and go again in the field. What's interesting is that the new uh, Vendetta with the packaging and everything, they actually include two sets of arms. So this is the new uh, Vendetta. They've uh, updated the Zero Zero camera. They've change some things around. The power cube right here has the boot button on this bottom right here for um, to change the firmware instead of up there. So they changed some different firmwares around. As well as the chassis. Uh, there's no hole up here. They changed the LED cover right here so it's, uh, it doesn't come off as easily. So I'm working on this for a different build for a really really long range FPV build. But the most important thing is that they do include two extra arms uh, they include the nice uh, sticky stuff for the covers to cover the wires right here. And it's just more practical to replace the motor yourself rather than just buy a new motor assembly yourself. Unless if you happen to break the motor because you crashed um, so bad. But most likely you're going to break the arm and you're not going to damage the motor. I've broken an arm before and I've replaced the motor pretty quickly. So this video is going to cover that. I'm actually using some 6 inch arms. These are uh, six inch arms by All Carbon RC. They cost about 18 to 20 dollars and they support six inch props. Um, and they're also uh, four millimeter carb carbon fiber than the three and a half or three millimeter. So you can see that these are uh, much thicker and they're the same mass. I actually weighed them and they're same mass and they're apparently they're much stronger because they're thicker. I guess that's what some of the reviews have been saying. So I've already soldered this side on here, but I'm going to solder the other motor in this video. It's pretty easy. You take your motor, you thread the wires through this hole right here, and uh, you're going to put the connector through. So when you're putting new motors on, you're going to need to buy some MT30 connectors. I will put a uh, description of all the materials you will need for this video, so you can do what I'm doing in the video description. So you have your MT30 connector, this is the uh, the male version right here. And you're going to want to make sure that they are oriented correctly. So this is a stock arm right here. If you see right here, there's a notch that points in this direction, points up in this direction, and then there's a notch that points in this direction. This is mainly for polarity, or sorry, not polarity, uh, motor direction. So when you place your arm, uh, when you plug in your arm on the bottom of your chassis, like this, it will line up, it will be sort of keyed. I mean, even if you get this thing wrong direction, I mean, it's still going to fit in. It's just going to fit in harder. But it's mainly so that the motor is spinning in the right direction when you put everything back together. So make sure that you have these in the right uh, uh, orientation. And then uh, just some friction holds these in together. They're, they're pretty much like almost press fit, but... They hold in just enough and they're going to be held in when you place, when you assemble everything back together. And one thing to note is that if you are using um, different motors like here, I'm using the Cobra uh, 2206 motors and slash 30. These are actually designed to support six cell batteries because uh, the Vendetta with the TVS Power Cube and the Core Pro can support six cell. I can actually go higher voltages and I can... Uh, uh, spin the props even faster. So I got these motors meant for that, but this is meant for long range FPV So I'm gonna be spinning six inch props at a lower KV because I want to see if I can go even further Like I have done in some um, as I've demonstrated in a video on my sister channel flying through Canon for about maybe eight minutes I'm gonna see if I can get maybe 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see that might be a stretch But it's worth a try but if you're going to be using different motors, you're going to have to change the uh, polar uh, the or the rotation of it using BL Heli. I will cover that in another video. But just note that if you're not using the stock motors, you're going to have to change the motor direction. Um, it's not too hard to do. It takes about uh, two three minutes. But that will be another video again. And one thing is, if you're using the all carbon RC arms, 
these arms are thicker so you're going to need to use a little bit longer screws the stock mounting motor screws will not work because this is a half a millimeter thicker and it just won't thread um, deep enough into the motor to hold it so it's uh, kind of important that you use a little bit longer screws if you're going to use a uh, M8 millimeter length screws. These are, uh, I believe, they're three by eight millimeters. Um, you're gonna need to trim them down to seven millimeters. So I've done that with a Dremel. Eight millimeters will actually end up hitting the stators right here. It will go through here. So you're gonna need to trim them down. If you can find three by seven millimeter screws, I guess you won't have to do any uh, grinding down of the threads. But just note that they need to be. They can't be too long, otherwise you'll damage the motor and it will seize it up. So we're gonna mount the motors in right here. So you take your three wires and then you just mount them through this hole. And what I like to do is I like to mount um, two of the holes in. And if there happens to be some shrink tubing around like a thick, thicker part that protects it, you're gonna wanna remove it um, as there's not enough space. I guess it depends on how thick the wires and how how much uh, how thick the shrink tubing is. But you want to make sure it goes in nice and snug. And then you're gonna just uh, bend your motor over like this, and then you're gonna bolt it down. So you're gonna bolt down two of the screws or two of the holes right here. So we're gonna do this side, the left side, and then the bottom right side. So we've mounted the motor in, it's secure, and we're gonna start with the soldering process. And of course, when you're mounting your motor, give it a spin so you're, uh, cause if you screwed it in too far and you, you're you gonna hit the stator, the motor's gonna seize up. So again, make sure your screw sizes are the right length uh, and it's not too long. So next, uh, we need to cut the wires, but before we cut the wires, if you see on this, on this um, by default, the MT30 connector, it says on the Team Blackshoe website, you need to rotate these half moon right here towards the direction of the wire. So I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna take some pliers. I have some needle nose pliers. So right here, there's like a little, uh, there's a little notch. Looks almost like a C shape right there. And uh, you're gonna need to rotate rotate that towards the direction of wire. So you take your needle nose plier and you kind of just grab it, grab the little C right here, and then you rotate it towards, uh, towards the direction of your wires. And you can do that with all three of them. The reason why there's this notch right here is it's mainly for uh, to solder the wires easier. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that they point in the direction so that your wires are soldered, are, uh, it makes it easier to solder. Because you don't want to solder your wires at a, at a point right here, such as uh, at the point like right here, and then you, and you break them down. You're going to want to solder them uh, straight on like that. So now we're going to reinsert back the plug right here. Make sure that the notches are in the right direction. So on this side, flat side of the arm right here, notches are, there's a notch right there, and then there's a notch right there. Next, we're going to cut the wire to length. And we're going we're gonna to solder them like I did right here. We're going to make them nice and even. We're not going to crisscross any of them. If you need again, if you need to rotate the motor, you do it from the software from BL Heli, and it will uh, make things really easy, and it will make things make sure everything fits nice and flush and looks really professionally done. Yeah, cut this wire to length. Uh, I like to uh, give it some tension, so when I solder, it's going to be nice and flat, and it's going to pull it on, pull it just a little bit. So I'll make a note of it where I'm going to cut. So 
So this is the right length cut for the wire. See right here, it's uh, it's the the end of the the end of the wire, the tip of it's going inside the C clamps, the C holder right there. You're gonna do that. The, do the same with the other two. Now that we have the wires cut to the exact, to the right length, now we're gonna strip the ends of it. You're gonna only wanna strip just a tad right here. Maybe just a, just a millimeter or two, just enough to expose the ends. So here's the ends of the wires stripped. Pretty, pretty small amount. And now we're gonna begin with the soldering. The first thing we wanna do is uh, heat your soldering iron up and we're gonna uh, tin these these connections first. And then after that, once they've been tinned, we're gonna, we can attach them from here. We don't really need to tin this because it's gonna be uh, lying inside the connection right here. You can tin it if you want to. I typically don't since this connection is so small. So the next step I do is I use a little bit of solder flux right here and I, and I dip the, the tip of it um, in, in a little bit of it as that will help with the, solder, so, uh, with the soldering. So you see here we have our perfect connection. And then you're gonna do the same with the other uh, with the other wires. What I like to do is I like to solder the outside of wires first to reduce the amount of heat that comes through. And then I will do the middle one last. So the outside first and then you do the middle one last. So we saw all the wires now, the left one, the middle, and the right side. Double check that none of the joints are touching each other. The middle wire, as I said, should be last, and you want to make sure none of them are touching so you don't create a short. So you see like right here, that one's done really well, this one's done really well as well. And then you can pull the connection out and see how, how easy it is to, uh, to adjust things. And then pop the connection back in, make sure everything's good. You can clean up the connection. Let me get a cloth real quick. And the final step to this, but after soldering, is that we need to uh, we need to cover these up right here. Unfortunately, uh, all carbon RC don't doesn't include this nice uh, 3M coat uh, material right here. So we're gonna actually be using some fiberglass tape. Fiberglass tape, uh, Teflon tape. I believe this is Teflon tape. I will put the video, uh, what the stuff is in the video description. But you're gonna want to take some tape to cover this up. You could use electrical tape, but I find it 
not very uh, reliable when it's uh, on the outside. So I use uh, some Teflon tape, fiberglass tape. It's pretty sticky and I use it to cover this. So take a piece of tape And then we're going to cover it right here. And then we're going to cut it to length. So just pretty much up to the screw as the bottom part is going to be held by the, by the, uh, by the little screw bottom skid plate, skid cover with these, this thing right here. Let's get enough of it to cover it. What I like about this stuff is it's uh, pretty uh, high temp resistant. So I take a heat gun and then I just uh, shoot along here for a little bit and it becomes a little extra sticky and this thing isn't going to come off at all. I wouldn't recommend that you do it with this stuff because this is actually more of a vinyl plastic cover and you will uh, end up destroying it. Next we're going to put the the, um, the skid plates on the bottom and you see right here uh, if you put enough tape over here um, it will it'll end up being held on or pushed uh, on it'll be held on by this a little bit better so it won't snag from from the corners. I did an okay job but I mean a lot of it's going to be covered up anyway. It would have been kind of nice if it was black, uh, like the bottom of these arms, but it doesn't really matter. It's just there to cover the wires up. If they have black Teflon tape, I guess uh, let me know, but I haven't seen any. And now I've installed everything here, and this is the completed arm of the Thebus Vendetta. Uh, this is, again, this is the 6-inch arm versus the... 5 inch arm. See how much longer they are. Oh, a little, little bit longer. Looks pretty good in my opinion. And uh, the Cobra motors do include uh, some washers. So if your screw is a little bit too long, uh, try to use it. You could try to use the include washers just to kind of offset. Uh, the thickness of the screws right here you could probably lift the motors up a little bit if you can't if you don't have the tools to trim down the the screws again i don't recommend using eight millimeter screws as they will protrude through the motor itself and damage the stators and then once you have the uh, everything done uh, you just mount the arms in again uh, the notches right here they match up And there you go, you have it right here. Of course, this needs to be in the chassis, everything like that, but that's how it would mount. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.